Into every generation, podcasters are born. Two guys in all the world, chosen ones. They alone will wield the strength and skill to discuss the vampires, demons, and the forces of darkness, to lament the spread of their evil and the swell of their number. This is the Untitled Buffy Project. In episode 19 of season 4, written by Marty Noxon and directed by James Contner, Oz returns to Sunnydale one last time. Willow and Tara's relationship is cemented for sure, and no one is happier than Carter and I. Didn't Marty Noxon write the last episode with Oz in it, Carter? Yeah, I, I, I thought the same thing, and uh, I wrote in my notes that I thought that that happened, and then I, I didn't check it until literally two minutes ago. So we did the research, and sure <laughs> enough. Marty, yeah. She, she, uh, she, she's, um, she's good with her, the werewolf stuff. Must be. I Seth Green, I don't think I've ever seen him do dramatic except for Buffy, and somehow he does it really well, but maybe all of that is has got to be attributed to Marty Noxon. That's a good point. I'm trying to think of something that he did that was dramatic that wasn't Buffy. I'm blanking right now. Maybe someone will know. <laughs> because what, what, do you, what do you got? Robot Chicken, Family Austin guy. Powers, uh... Without a Paddle. You got nothing. Really weird stuff without a paddle. I can't really. Was he in some horror movie? Probably at least one. Oh well, no, this was a comedy too. He was also he was in Idle Hands. Oh, he was also in that that he played an Amish guy in that one comedy that came out a couple years ago. Nope, don't know what you're talking about. We are so instantly distracted. (sighs) Marty would be very disappointed with us. She writes such focused things, and she... Well, anyway, so Oz was in the previous Leon, which gave away immediately that he was going to be on the episode. <laughs> yeah, I actually... I've been rewatching. I've been watching this season twice as we've been going through this, just so I can absorb fully the experience. And on the second watch of just about all of them, Alicia's been watching it with me. And when I queued up this episode, I blocked the TV, and I said, don't watch the previously, and I fast-forwarded through it. Because I didn't, because the reveal of Oz at the end, right before the title, is like so surprising if you don't watch the previously. Yes, but no. But no, they show him in the very first second of the previously. I'm just like. Oh, Oz is going to be in this episode. They're going to, yeah, it's like, um, uh, we, we, this is the second uh, week in a row that, that we've mentioned this. Uh, the West Wing used previous Leons in a very similar fashion. And sometimes you would see, like, in the fourth season, they would dig way back to something in the first season. And then you'd know, like, oh, they're it's, it's going to be something with Lord John Marbury or whatever. Right. It's like, why are you doing this? Please, I'm, I'm going to remember who For Oz is. For the people is. who don't watch the show and are just tuning in and they're like, who's this guy? probably one of those decisions that you know a network exec made yeah and and that uh joss was like fine whatever i don't have time to fight this fight i fought so many others to even keep the show alive you can have your previous leons yeah joss joss is does that like soap opera thing where he right before a break or something he does like a da 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 and network execs are probably like we don't want the audience to be like that surprised because they're gonna they're gonna freak out <laughs> What if they don't know Oz? It's like, well, well. <laughs> then they're not paying attention, and they can go watch something else. And if they don't know him, it's like, what this like twelve second little bit in the previously on is going to be like, oh, okay. Now Got I know it. everything about him. I know yeah, the, all the details of the relationship that he had with Willow and the gang, and you know, what? it just seems silly. Um, so anyway, Oz shows up. Well, before that, uh, it's it's the this is turning into like the Terra and Willow show. Yeah, in some ways. I know. Because they're adorable and the fans loved them. I love them. They're getting a cat together. Oh my god, I love that they're getting a cat together. <laughs> I mean, OMG, they're cat ladies. OMG, they're getting a cat. They're in love. It's awesome. And Tara is sort of get, like right before Oz shows up, they're having a little Scooby meeting. And the past couple episodes, we've been kind of sort of complaining that they're not really tied in with the rest of the sort of arc of the season Mm -hmm. sort of like they could have showed up anywhere and uh willow specifically says to tara like in in way of translating something that came up uh like they haven't been seeing a lot of uh or buffy hasn't been getting a lot of hits she hasn't been finding a lot of demons or vampires and uh Willow tells Tara, when things get slow, it usually means something extra bad is going to (laughs) happen. 
and I, I immediately thought that that was some sort of meta commentary like yes i realize audience that we've been kind of <laughs> slowing down a little bit don't worry something extra bad is going to be happening soon <laughs> yeah yeah i think she was talking directly to us i think so too and uh, oz shows up and it's so awkward hey that's his, just... that's his big welcome. That's his speech when he walks in the door. Hey. Hey. Anya, being Anya, uh, notices how awkward it is, and she says, everyone's so uncomfortable now. <laughs> it is really uncomfortable. Because, like, we've been building up this relationship between Willow and Tara for a long time now, over the course of six, seven episodes. And it's, and, and in the in the course of the the broadcast of the season, we haven't we probably haven't seen Oz in six months or more. Yeah, they had a break. Yeah, this episode was aired in May, and Oz probably disappeared in like October or November. Yeah, a long, long time ago. Yeah, yeah I think you're right. I think it was uh, around ish the Halloween episode. So it, any audience member. Well, however disappointed they may have been that Oz left has probably been by this time they're like, okay, Oz is gone. Oh wait, there's Oz. Uh, I was I was uncomfortable with the whole with the entire idea of bringing him in. I guess it was really sort of ballsy to test the relationship between Willow and Tara by bringing Oz back into the show. Mm -hmm. Why did he even want to do this? Why did I mean? Do you think? What I don't know any of the background on this. Was he like? Did Joss want to do this? Did I really? I really don't know. I, I guess I at the. I guess the best I could speculate is they wanted to give a different kind of closure to Oz and get to show off the strength of this new relationship. Yes, there's a lot of payoff at the end of this episode. Right. Um. So Oz is not a werewolf anymore, or something. Well, he. It's kind of like a Hulk situation. Kind of. He's he's angry all the time. <laughs> That's what it is. No, it's like herbs and chants and something about Tibet. Something about Tibet and he whatever he he he's he can, he's controlling the wolf inside of him now. Right. It is like the Hulk. I didn't think about. Actually, that. that was the very first thing I thought of. I was like, he has learned to be angry all the time. He he's always the wolf. Um. He asks uh, Willow if there's a new guy there's a new guy and she he, says no apparently he asked xander and xander is as thick as a brick and was just like no there's no no it's not no nothing's going on she's nope, totally no. single yeah i <laughs> xander in soon enough we'll we'll find out about this but yeah he is pretty thick <laughs> i i mean like the, i think the whole the whole audience knew that there was a romance between them like way back when they first got introduced right practically before they knew themselves i think that that's probably true i think that's probably true there's there's a great line um oz wants to uh i i don't i don't remember what the other option was but he was like do you want to like uh, go to your room and talk. He's like, do you want to get some breakfast uh, or go to your room and talk? And Willow says, I think I'll have the less confusing waffles. <laughs> the less confusing waffles. Uh, I love it. Um, and I, I, I will bring this up some more because I, I didn't know later uh, down the road this would happen, but I know that Oz has been on Angel a couple times. Yeah, he was at I, least there immediately after he left. So, and I haven't been watching it, and I've chosen not to watch it. And I, in my notes, I have, like, oh, did they explain this whole thing on Angel? Like, why well, he's not a werewolf? But no, they didn't. But I will continue to complain about things that happen on Angel <laughs> that aren't on Buffy. Um, because I don't like that. So, Willow and Oz, like, spend the whole night in her room and talk. And like, somehow the, the subject of what is going on with her relationship never comes up. Yeah, she doesn't bring up. Uh, she doesn't bring up Tara, and actually, it's like early-ish in the morning, and uh, Willow like goes to brush her teeth or something, and Tara comes by, and Oz is there by himself and opens the door. It's like, oh hey, Tara, and she's like, he doesn't oh. even know her name. Oh yeah, I guess she's just like, that blonde girl. Right, he says, oh you were at the Scooby meeting, and she, he's like, oh are you you here to see. 
Willow? He says he specifically says Willow, I think, even though Willow and Buffy do live there. I don't know why he thought that she would just be there for Willow. Um, and she stutters, as she always does when she gets nervous and sort of runs away. Yeah. Which just, like, breaks my heart. <laughs> breaks my heart. She doesn't... Willow, she avoid, she, I guess she avoids confrontation. Yeah, but, I mean, like, the thing that's breaking my heart is, like, Willow needs to choose, and she needs to, like, make everyone understand, like... Yes, what her choice is. I, we've been talking about the closet, and she's still kind of like she's got a foot out, but she's not out out. She's out with Buffy, specifically, and she's comfortable acknowledging ish her relationship with Tara. Like they're getting a cat together. <laughs> yes. Um, but small you know, steps. She's, she's she's gotta she's gotta do something. Gotta do something. So. This episode almost had nothing that was connected to the rest of the broader arc except this one thing. Uh, uh, Adam finds Spike in the crypt. <laughs> I love... Uh, Spike is is sleeping or resting or whatever. He's got his eyes closed. And uh, Adam walks up to him, and I, I guess he did it completely silently. So when his hand comes down, Spike grabs it. He makes mention about, like, Big Lug walking towards him. You must be a pretty scary... And he opens his, his eyes, and he's like, Oh! <laughs> It's you. <laughs> I uh, I I cursed in my notes because I was not expecting that at all. I thought that this was going to be another one of these like little character episodes that, and that we would get a good Buffy episode, and that eventually, an episode or two down the road, we would get the payoff and figure out stuff with Adam. But they're like, no, we're going to do Adam stuff too. This is Buffy like firing on all eight cylinders. It's like we're going to do a Tara and Willow story, and we're going to bring a character we haven't seen for a while, and we're going to have Adam in it, and this and that. It was great. I loved this episode. This was a great episode. Um, so Adam makes a deal with Spike. And I, we don't really know the details of it, but Spike is going to help him. And in return, Adam is going to remove the chip from Spike's head that makes him not able to feed. or uh, He's going to give people. him a uh, chip back to me. A chip back. Did they mention it? Was that used in this episode? Uh, Spike says it at some point. <laughs> uh, Adam holds up three fingers or whatever the boy scout salute is and when he promises to spike that he's going to do it and he says scout's honor and uh you were a boy scout and adam says parts of me were (laughs) he's aware of everything that's adam he's aware of the boy scouts yes um so oz goes wolfie um he runs into tara he thinks that uh willow's coming out of coming down the hallway and it's actually Tara and I think the reason he thought it was Willow is because he has heightened senses and he smells and then he's like you're not wait what's going on with you two yeah no he says um I can smell her all over you he's Uh, ever the very the when she came to the room before he got this bizarre this like confounded look on his face like he knew that there was something but he just couldn't quite place it and here it happens again but he figures it out this time yeah this is probably the first overt but subtle uh indication that willow and tara are intimate and you know uh potentially sexually because he says i can smell her all over you and it's like well they've at least been you know very close with each other Mm -hmm. for an extended period of time if he can smell her all over you and he just freaks the f out wolfs up and he looks at he looks at tara and like before like the last second before the wolf takes over he tells her to run yeah uh and then he chases her all over the place and then um some initiative goons end up tara throws a chair at him and it takes him down and i was like wow how did she do and then i see that there's like a needle sticking out of his back where the initiative guy shot him (laughs) it's like she's really strong oh no that wasn't her Yes, so he's he's all he's all in the initiative and naked like he always is. Um, why can't they give him clothes? <laughs> because well, the initiative doesn't want to give him clothes because they they don't care. They're just like I, I whatever. He's an animal, and and this is the payoff of uh, Buffy trying to explain to Riley that, and I, I've mentioned this before that there are shades of gray in this whole like real world. Otherworld mystical beings like 
it's not black and white. There's not just good and evil. There's lots of things in the spectrum. And Riley finally gets to see that for real because he sees the werewolf turn back into Oz. Yeah, at the beginning of the episode, she calls him a bigot for being so upset that Willow had been in a relationship with a werewolf and that they had been friends with a werewolf. And now he he got to know Oz and uh, got to see him you know, as a real person, and he tries to sneak him out of the initiative and gets caught, and uh, this is the end of his relationship with the initiative. Yeah. I thought that they tried to indicate that that had happened already when Maggie died, but I either that wasn't the case and I just misread it, or they tried that and it wasn't clear enough, so they did that. They did it again. <laughs> I thought that it was pretty clear that he was not going to be with the initiative, and then he was, so I guess I was just wrong. I guess he was still I, at least consulting. I don't know. Because we haven't really seen him running operations or anything since yeah. then. Yeah, I mean, he's been going there-ish and stuff, but whatever. Uh, so he realizes that he was wrong, and, you know, he's uh, he's got... He's broken Oz out, and... Uh, oh, and he's going to be court-martialed? That's not good. That's not good. Uh, Spike shows up and offers to lead them to the initiative. That's how they... That's how they like get. Uh, uh, they they the Scooby Gang breaks in. Right. But immediately, I was like, Spike put uh, Spike got put up to this by Adam, and uh, that does uh, that I that will come up later. Um, but uh, he is working for Adam now for sure. Uh, so, oh boy, um, two things happen at the end of the episode. One, Buffy decides to tell. Uh, Riley about Angel, which I can't believe has not come up yet. But apparently it hasn't, and she's gonna open the door on that, so oh boy. Yeah, Angel's not just an ex, he's the ex. Yeah, he's like that, yeah, he's that guy. Uh, and then Oz and Willow have a sort of kind of tearful goodbye. He leaves Sunnydale forever, presumably. Um... And the very end of the episode, uh, Willow comes to Tara, uh, and she's holding a candle. And the whole room is dark. This was, this was, I thought this was filmed really well. The whole room is dark, and she's holding a candle. And Tara is kind of in tears, and she, uh, she sort of thinks that Willow is going to break up with her. Uh, and that you know, she's going to go be with Oz. And she says, you have to be with the person that you love. Uh, and Willow says that she is. And and blows up it's the candle. so adorable. I my last note is I'm in tears, literally in tears. I was crying. <laughs> I thought it was great. 